15? 15 minutes. Okay. So we're going to graph the function, compare with the graph of x squared. Y equals x squared. Um, what is this plus 2 going to do to the graph? Up to. Knowing where the vertex is helps us to pick some uh, relatively simple points. Like, should we pick five? That's a little too far away. One's a good one. It's nice and close to home, close to the vertex. One. And if we put, it, if we find what one is worth, then we also get another one right away because of symmetry. Negative one. Right? They are equally away, or uh, equally far away from the vertex. So the axis. put in 1 into the function, 1 squared is 1, but then we make it negative, negative 1 plus 2, negative 1, negative one? just positive, positive 1, right, negative 1 plus 2, uh, so we get 1, and then you should get 1 at negative 1 as well, so 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, Just like we thought it should, and it's up to perfect. How does this graph going to look different from just regular x <coughs> squared? That should be x squared. <coughs> x squared. How's it going to look from different from just x squared? Y squared. Down, down five. Good. Down five. All right. How about this two? What will this two do? Very good. Steepness. How? Like more steepness or less steepness? Because whatever the output is, we're going to double it. So the output, which is y, y is vertical. If you make it more vertical, it's going to be steeper. So twice as steep. And uh, what's one more thing that will happen? It will open down. It will open down. This guy right here will make it open down. Uh, so it's down 5. going to open down, and it's going to be rather steep. It's going to be twice as steep as normal. Pick some x values. What x values do we pick? Seeing as our axis of symmetry is right here. One. One's good, and we get what for free? Negative, Negative one, because it's equally far away from the axis of symmetry. We put one in here. We get one squared. One times negative two. Minus 5, negative 7, we should get negative 7 there as well. So negative 5, 6, 7, 1, negative 7, negative 1, negative 7. And when we talk about comparing it, we've already compared it. We said it's down 5 and it's steeper and it's opening down. And then it's not moving down.
makes an axis of symmetry. We need to know. No? I think we did. I have a circle in my book. 21 through 24. Just this three, two. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, first thing we're going to find on the graph. The what? The vertex, yeah. We're going to find the vertex. And the first part of finding that is we're going to find the x. Then we'll find the y. How do we find the x? Negative b over 2 Exactly. Negative b over 2 8. What is b? Negative 6. Negative 6. And that's a squared plus bx plus c. When you say a, b, and c, you mean a, b, and c. So negative, negative 6, because negative 6 is b over 2 times what's a? Find the y part of the vertex. Well, again, what we just found for x, right? We just found an x. If we want y, we always just plug the x in and find y. That's how functions work. You put in x, you get out y. Uh, so we're going to put in x, which is now, we know, 1, which is 3 times 1 squared, minus 6 times 1, plus 4. Yeah. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 6 times 1, negative 6, plus 4. 3 minus 6, that's negative 3, plus 4, minus 1. So we get our vertex at 1, 1. They said label the vertex. So I'll label it 1, 1. Put an arrow to it. Axis of symmetry right through the vertex. That's x equals 1. That's the equation of that line. And then we just need a couple more. One and three. Well, one's already done, right? If you pick, if you pick one for x, you just pick the x part of the vertex, right? And three. Um, three's not bad. Three's just right over here. Uh, if we do three plus two three, then what other x value will you get the same y value? Negative three. Negative what? Negative three. Well, that would be true if the axis of symmetry was right here, but it's actually right here. So this is 2 away, right? And so if we go 2 the other way, we wind up negative 1. So negative 1 would be the same. So negative 3, 3 times negative, no, 3 times 3 squared minus 1 minus uh, 6.
Because we have a how do I do it? How do we do that? Can you put the positive in the inside row? Positive four and fifty. In front of the x squared, right? That'll always be one in front of the x squared, even if we have an x in there. Okay, in front of the x squared, it tells us which way it opens. It opens up because it's positive. Okay, so we know it's going to open up. Okay, would you say that this function has a minimum value or a maximum value? Maximum. Maximum. So. Let's talk about the definition of minimum and maximum. The definition of a maximum would be this is the biggest value on the graph, bar none. Over all other values, it's the biggest. Can you find the biggest value on this function? See what I'm saying is, uh, let's see, it's going to look something like this. Uh, if I find a really big value, could you find a bigger value than that? Yeah. Just go a little bit past there, right? I think it would have been a bigger, bigger value than that one. Yeah. yeah, so do we have a maximum? <coughs> do we have a value that is the biggest, bigger than any other value? Yeah. No. What do we have? We have a, a, a value that is the smallest. There's no value smaller than this value. It is the minimum value. So we have, this function have a minimum. Okay. Where is that minimum? Where? Right. Well, the minimum is clearly going to be at the vertex. Here's the vertex. Where is the vertex? Seven. At seven. At what? Like, what's the? What are the coordinates? Zero seven. Zero seven. That's all they're asking for. They just want to know what is the minimum value. The smallest value you could possibly get is seven. You cannot get a smaller value than that out of this function. open up or down? Or down. 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 It opens down. So a minimum or a maximum? Minimum maximum. Maximum. There is a, a value here that is the biggest value that you can find. What's the coordinate of that place? Negative one. This guy moves it down one. What does this six do? It just makes it steeper, right? That doesn't affect the maximum value, that affects just how steep it is. So, or not, not that. This opens down, this makes it steeper, this moves it down. This is the thing that actually affects where the maximum value is. It's 1 over 9,000 in front of x squared. Does that mean it's going to be uh, steep or not very steep? Not very steep. This is a really small number, 1 over 9,000. Right? It's really going to squish that parabola down. Uh, and we can see that that parabola that that cable makes is very not steep. So um, the picture shows us, like here's a tower. And the tower is right on the y-axis, and the, the road part of the, the bridge is on the x-axis. And here's the cable, makes a parabola. And they want to know the height of the cable above the, the ground, like the, the ground being the, the road of the bridge. 
How high is that lowest point? Well, what do we call that point? The vertex. Can we find the vertex? Yeah. How? Negative b over 2a. It's b over 2a. That's going to be x part of the vertex. Negative, what's b? <coughs> Negative 715. Negative 715. Negative b over 2 times a. What's a? Since these are such ridiculous numbers and they actually represent real values, let's from this, this tower here. It's 2,100 feet away from the tower, and now we want to find out how high it is above the ground. How do we do that? What do we do with 2,100? Plug it in for x. Do that all at once here. 1 over 9,000 times uh, 2,100 squared. Solve the equation means to solve for what? X, get x by itself. How are we going to do that? Different ways we can choose to do it. With x on one side, that's definitely a mission of ours. How are we going to do that? Add 9x. Cancel that 9x. Why add 9x and not add 4x? That would be a negative. That would be negative. Now we have positive 5x.
graphing function, label the vertex, axis of symmetry, and x intercepts. This is called what form? Intercept form. Intercept form. Because if you remember, an x intercept is where the graph the graph crosses the x-axis, and what is the y value on the x-axis? Zero. So whatever that x value is, the y value is zero. So what x values can you plug into x? So what values can you plug into x that will give you zero in the end? Negative three, right? Negative three plus three is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So negative three is an intercept. And also 3. 3 minus 3 is 0, and 0 times anything is 0. So 3 is an x-intercept. They also want us to find the vertex. How in the world are we going to find the vertex? How will we find the vertex? Where's the vertex? work, we could do FOIL, we could do then negative V over 2A, you know, it's just, it's just a easy way to do it. Anything at all. What's that? So the nation would be for a system of equations, and that's, we don't have a system of equations. We already have done that. We made both of them zero with negative 3 and positive 3. Look on the graph here. We have two points. Where will the vertex be? At zero because zero is what? Not the origin. Not always at the origin. Not the typical y axis. Not the typical y axis. Get some check. Get some check. For any two points, the vertex should be. Right in the middle. Yeah. Did anybody say in the middle? Yes, we did. You said it? You said it? Are you sure? No, I said in the middle. Middle? You shouldn't say it loud. You shouldn't say it loud. Okay, it should be right in the middle. What's right in the middle between negative 3 and 3? Zero. Zero. Zero's right in the middle. So the vertex is at 0, comma. How do we find out what the y value is? Zero, that'll give us three. Zero, that'll give us negative three. Three times negative three. Negative nine. So the vertex is at zero, negative nine. The axis of symmetry, x equals zero. The x-intercepts are three comma zero and negative three.
some value of x and wind up with zero because you put an x and you get out y. One. And on the x-axis, since we're looking for x-intercepts, y is y is zero. Y is always zero along the x-axis. So if we can get the function to be equal to zero, we'll say, oh, that value of x that I plugged in, that's going to put me on the x-axis. Y cannot be zero. So we can see phi will do that. 5 minus 5 is 0. 1 will do that because 1 minus 1 is 0. And when you multiply all that stuff together, when you multiply through and one of those things is 0, the whole thing is 0. So how about um, where's the vertex? What's the x value of the vertex? Five, three, three. How do you guess 3? Or not guess, but know 3? It's right between the two x intercepts. If we were to add, 1 plus 5, and divide that by 2, 1 plus 5, divided by 2 to find the middle, and that'll give us 3. So the y value of the vertex is 3. And how are we going to find the y, the y value? Plug it in. 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 Yeah, we plug in 3 plug in. into the function, so 2 times 3 minus 5 times 3 minus 1. 2 times negative 2 times 2 equals negative 4, negative 8. number that I have there wasn't the 26 from 4.2, that was from 4.1. Oh, yeah. So that way
to, I know you've heard foil before, I'm going to get you off of the foil. Because foil is a, is a, what we call a mnemonic device, it's something that helps us remember a rule or a fact or a date, whatever, it helps us remember something, but we can understand what's actually going on. Like for instance, let me just same story over here. If we're going to multiply these two things together, what are we supposed to do with this parenthesis? Distribute it to everything in this parenthesis. Okay. And that means that x plus 1 is going to get multiplied by x, so x is going to get distributed into here, and negative 6 is going to get distributed into here. Or we can go the other way. x needs to get distributed through here, and 1 needs to get distributed through here. Just everything in this parenthesis needs to get multiplied by everything in this parenthesis. Everything needs to get distributed. In the end, we will usually wind up doing the exact same thing as FOIL tells us to do, but with understanding. We understand that we're going to multiply everything by everything else. <coughs> so I like to just start with this and work my way through. So I'll multiply this by x. x squared is negative 6x. Okay, so x got distributed through these parentheses. It's all done. And then we'll use 1. 1 times x. And 1 times negative 6. That's x squared minus 5x minus 6. So what do we do with a 4? Distribute it. So we'll have 3 of these things. 4x squared minus 20x minus 24. That's it. It's the standard form. Once we distribute everything together, everything is, is, uh, is all multiplied out. going to pull this part aside, just the x minus 25 squared. x minus 25 squared. Here's what you should not do. x squared minus 25 squared. What's up? Get out. Don't do that. No, bad. It's already in the fireball. We know it's bad. Don't cross it out. I'll just let you see it. It's bad. Bad. Okay? And you're thinking like, hey, distribute. Right? Distribute the square. Maybe you're thinking that, maybe you're not. If you're not, that's good. If you are, don't do that anymore. Because what does square mean? No, not double. Multiply the thing that you're squaring by itself. What are you squaring? Are you squaring x? No, you're not squaring x. You're not squaring negative 25. You're squaring this. And this should get multiplied by itself. itself. So here is this multiplied by itself. Okay, so we're going to distribute the x to the x, x squared, distribute the x to the negative 25, minus 25, x. x has been distributed, it's all done, now negative 25 gets distributed. That's 25 times 25. Thank you. And then we'll add before we multiply by 15, and not that, before we combine the terms. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we have 15x squared minus 15 times 50. 130, and now we can combine the 130 and the other constant. 9,000, uh, yeah, 9,500. 
and start on what you see on the board.
Here's what we need to do. Okay. So what are my goals? For you to define what a solution is. Okay? Solution is also called a root. A solution is this quadratic equation. So how would you define a solution to the, this quadratic equation here? You don't have to tell me a number. You don't have to tell me specifics. In general, like if I had a solution, I would know it was a solution because this is what would happen. It would, it would solve for x. So if we had some x value, say I said x is 2, okay, that's a solution. How would you know if that's a solution or not? If, if you put 2 in for x and you got 5, right? Okay, let's try 2. Is 2 a solution? 2 squared, that's 4, plus 4. Minus 3, is that 5? Yeah. That's 5. Okay, so 2 is a solution? Yes, 2 is a solution, that's good. 2 is a solution. Why don't you just guess and look around and try out some numbers. Don't stray too far from 0, but maybe it's negative, maybe it's positive. <laughs> try it out. Try Plug it in some numbers, see if you can find the other solution. There is another solution, the solution is besides two. Try it out. Talk amongst yourselves. Maybe you can split up the labor. Whenever you can try two, or whenever you can try one, maybe you can try negative three. Okay. is that you just plug numbers in and try to guess and check for now for the next 30 minutes. Maybe 15. Anybody find it?
I'll show you why you got that right now. You're so, so smart. You know exactly what happened to you. Because you did this. You did negative 4 squared. All right. And then plus 2. Maybe times negative 4. Do that. Minus 3. Negative 27. and I want to bring it back up without typing it all in again, so I get a second, and then what you press to get the answer, right? So I could enter, brings it back, and then go back and fix it. Okay, so I want to put a parentheses in there, so second, insert, I'm going to insert that first one right there, and insert it there. Square negative four, should we come out with a negative? No. We should come out positive. So now this should come out to be five. So that's what happened. There you go. All right. So uh, Josie yes. was trying to solve for x and doing it like we normally would to get x on one side, get numbers on the other. Right? X squared plus two x equals eight. And then what did you do? Divide by 2, okay, so then we get x squared over 2 plus x equals 8 over 2 over 4. What did you do then? Um, then you spread the answer so you have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you out of ideas now? Um, I'm thinking there's something else you can do from here. Multiply by 2 again, we just divided by 2. Oh, oh. well. Square root of that entire side, that's a good idea, but then you have to take the square root of, of this too. So that would get messy. It's a great idea, actually. Just reminds me of getting messy. Let's do this. Here's a weird idea. It's totally against everything you know already. Uh, to you, you know, get x on one side, numbers on the other. What I'm gonna say is let's subtract five from both sides so that we get zero. Look familiar? Where do you see it? What's standard form? Do you see it anywhere else? Right there. Right, right there. Okay. And this is the the multiplied out form of this. Right. So could we go backwards? Can we take this and rewrite it like that? Can we take this and write it like that. X plus four times x minus two equals zero. This is one of my favorite things in math, this idea. Somebody thought of this. They, maybe they ran into that problem. They got eight on one side, and they had x squared plus two x on the other side, and they could not figure out how to get x by itself. So they said, hey, check this out. If I get it to equal zero, and then instead of these being added and subtracted, I make it multiplied together. I change it so that it's, it's in factor form. This makes it really simple because can you find a number for x that would cause this to be 0? Mm -hmm. What numbers would cause it to be 0? Uh, yep. And? Two. And 2. Right? Negative 4 and 2. If you put a negative 4 in here, then this becomes 0. And 0 times anything is 0. 
And if this is zero, then zero times anything is zero. So it makes it real simple. Either this is zero, or this other guy is zero. So either x is negative four, or x is two. This is what we call the zero product property. If you multiply two numbers together, or three numbers together, or four numbers together, but if you multiply numbers together and you get zero, and one of those numbers you multiplied by must have been, <coughs> had to be zero. If I multiply A times B and I get zero, is it possible that neither A nor B is zero? Is that possible? Would I do one times two, would that be zero? Uh, one over a million times 13? any way to not use zero and multiply two numbers together and get zero. Either one or both of these is zero. Okay? So that's the zero product property. If you multiply two numbers together and the result is zero, you had to have multiplied by zero. Okay? Even if you didn't see it actually happen, it's like it's, it's evident. Okay? You walk into another in, into a room and you see this guy is holding a zero and you say what happened? And he said I multiplied two numbers together. And I got this zero, and you're like, you must have multiplied by zero. I know you had to have done that. It's the evidence, right? It's ironclad. You had to have multiplied by zero. So one of these has to be zero. So we set them both equal to zero and solve for x. We get these like mini equations that are much easier to solve. Let's try again. Throw up another one. x squared minus 3x plus 9 equals 7. Subtract 7 from both sides, so we get 0 on the other side. Carter? Uh, yeah, uh, 0 on one side, because the idea is make these, rather than uh, adding and subtracting, make them multiply together. Make them multiply together so that I can say, well, two things multiplied equals zero means one of them was zero. Can you write this as two things multiplied together? Look familiar? See it here? How can I write this as two things multiplied together? Reverse foil is a good word. The word we're going to use is called factory. We're going to take this and we're going to factor it so that it's two factors. The word factor, you, you know what the, factor, the word factor means. Like, is uh, 2 a factor of 15? No. Why not? Because. Yes, it is. 2 is a factor of 15? If it's times But that goes against fact, the definition of factor. What's that? But we need to multiply two whole numbers together for them to be factors. So two's not a factor, but three's a factor, five's a factor, is 15 a factor? Yeah. One? No. Yeah, those are all the factors because three times five is 15, okay? So is x minus one a factor of x squared minus three x plus two? Yeah. yeah, it's a factor because x minus one times x minus two times, just like three times five is 15, x minus one times x minus two is x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay? It's a factor. You factored it into its two factors. When you multiply the factors together, you get the product. Um, so, if we multiply these two things together and we get 0, then x minus 1 has got to be 0, or x minus 2 has got to be 0, or both. Right? If this is 0, then x is equal to what? 1. And this, x is equal to... How many solutions do we have? Two. Two solutions. One will work. If I plug one in here, I will get, well, if it's arranged like this, I will get seven. Or equivalently, I will get zero. If I plug two in here, I'll get zero. Those are the two solutions. Okay? Let's do it one more time. It's going to be solid now. x squared plus 3x plus 3. Yes? Um, so, okay, so it says x squared minus 3x plus 2. Where does the 3 go? 
you tell me what are the binomials up here? X minus one is a binomial. X minus two is a binomial. X plus one is a binomial. X plus two is a binomial. Bi meaning two, nomial meaning number. Two numbers. Okay. Well, if those are binomials, what's this? Trinomial. It's a trinomial. What do you guys ask? It's a trinomial. So you multiply two binomials together, you get trinomial. Combine like terms together. Three plus nine times eleven. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now we have a B instead of an X. No big deal. Okay. So if we're going to go to factor this. Not there. How many b's are there? One. Well, there's there's one b squared, but how many b's is a first? Is there? There's zero of them. So when we combine like terms, we need to get how much? Zero. Like terms being when we multiply these together and these together and combine like terms, we need to get nothing. We need to get no b at all. We can multiply b by b and get b squared, and multiply two numbers together and get negative 81. <coughs> but also when we multiply negative 9 by b and 9 by b, we add them together. We get B's. So like this, B squared plus zero B minus 81. So, notice this is a perfect square. Is this a perfect square? Yes. Yeah, what's the square root of 81? It is not. So since we have B squared we'll minus 9 squared, Two perfect squares, it just is b plus and b minus that square root. That's what we call a difference of squares. x squared, the only thing is now you have a negative x squared. That kind of comes. You have like positive x squared. Mm -hmm. Oh, move everything on that side. Yeah. So we'll subtract 14x from both sides. Subtract 14x. Also, add 49 to both sides. Okay, then what are we going to do with this guy? We'll factor it. Get that. Got to be. So, 
two things multiplied together makes zero, means one of them is zero, or both of them is zero. So x must be seven, or we find x is seven again. Both factors give us a solution of seven. So seven would be both solutions. Both of them. Find the x values that when you plug them into this, you get what do you think? Zero. 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 Yeah. How do we factor that? No, we factor the fraction. The fraction? One has to be a positive. So, so C has to be zero. So one of them has to be zero? So the x plus zero, x plus zero. There we go. Right? Yeah. Multiplies to make zero, zero for C, and adds together to make 11 for 11x. Okay, here's another way. X plus zero is just X plus zero? X plus One. X. Uh, it's just X. X plus zero is just X, so we have X times X plus 11. What do we do with this X? We distribute it. So we got X squared plus 11. Yep. So it's a little different. Rather than thinking of it as, as X plus zero times X plus 11, you just think, well, it's like I could take the X out of both of these and put it outside the parentheses, and then I can distribute the X to go back with it. It's like the reverse of distribution. Undo the distribution and wind up with this. So you get zero. So x plus eleven could be zero. So x would be what? Negative eleven. Negative eleven. What else can be zero? Zero. Could be zero. Uh, this other thing that's being multiplied could be zero. Just x could be zero by itself. X is zero. you were trying to solve, a quadratic equation you were trying to solve, first you want to make sure the other side is zero. zero. So make sure it equals zero. Before you can solve it, make sure it equals zero. Okay, so it equals zero. Then what do we do next? What do we do with this? Factor. Factor it. Factor the quadratic. Now we factor the quadratic. What do we do with those factors? Well, if we multiply, we just wind up with this again. What do we do? We say this has to be what? Zero. Or this has to be zero. So we set the factors equal to zero. After that, you might have to subtract 11 from both sides or something, but solve each for x. If you get anything from 0, factor it out. Now you know when you multiply those two things together and you get 0, one of them has to be 0, so 7 both equal to 0, and you solve for x. in the gear.
to factor that. Can we just go like this and give our x's like we had before and then look for two numbers? We'll plug make negative 3. Is that going to work? Yeah? Why won't that work? Yes. Okay, so let's say negative 3 plus 1. Let's multiply this out and check. We multiply x by x, what do we get? What are we supposed to get? 7x. Seven seven then everything will get multiplied by 7. It's going to strip that 7 in at the end. 7x. Right? So that's going to make this hard, because you can't just say negative 3 and 1, because you're going to have to multiply it by 7 at the end. It'd be negative you get negative 21. Oh, wait, no. No. Don't give up. Here's the thing. Just like before, when we had to have two things multiplied by negative 3, now we need the numbers in front of the x also multiply together and give 7. What? <laughs> <laughs> we multiply the x's together okay. to get the x squared. We can't get x squared, we need to get what? 7x seven. Seven squared. So 1 and a 7? 1 and a 7? That will give you 7x squared when you multiply it, right? Mm -hmm. so there we go. Now, that's what we need to do. We still need two numbers to make, to multiply and make negative 3. Plus 3 and what? Minus 1. Minus 1. Okay. Now we're just going to have to check and make sure. Because not these two numbers aren't going to add together to make negative 20 anymore. You have to multiply one of them by 7. So let's see what happens. we got negative. Or it would be the other way around. Though. Other, you think negative 3? Yeah, that negative. Positive 1? Yep. Now you're, like you did it in your head and you found, oh, i got to have a negative 21x plus a 1x gives me that negative 20. 7, we, we just want to check and make sure. 7x times x gives you the 7x squared. That's good. 7x times negative 3 is negative 21x. 1 times x is x. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. When we combine like terms, we do get negative 20x. Did you just make this problem up? 20. Do I what? Did, I, did you make this problem up? Or guess and check, like you know you have to have 7 and 1. It's got to be that way. There's no other way to make 7 than 7 times 1. What about when this happens? 12x squared plus 36x plus 24. Then we go to factor. We need coefficients in front of the x that multiply to make what? 12, we gotta get 12. How can you get 12? What numbers can you multiply to make 12? 2 and 3. 2 and 3, no. 2 and 6. 2 and 6? Two and six? Yeah. 3 and 4? 3 and 4. 1 and 12. You see all the options we get? Yeah, we have so many options. Did we get to 24? Yes. yes. 12 and 2. 12 and 2? 24? Yes. 6 and 4. 6 and 4? 8 and 3? You see all the com combinations we can make? Does that make for a long day of guessing and checking? That'll give me 12. I could put a, a 3 and an 8 here, and that'll give me 24. But when I multiply the thing together, is it going to give me 36x? Absolutely. Uh, 8 times 6 is 48, plus 3 times 2, that's 6. That's not going to be 36. Well, I don't need a negative. If I had a negative in here, either this would be negative or this would be negative. Or if I had two negatives, this would be negative. Everything's positive. Doesn't work. So, let me show you a sure button.
wire way the factor that Should we get rid of our Hey huh? you could divide it by six. Actually, we can factor out a 12. Oh, yeah. X squared plus 3x yeah. plus 2. Is this your surefire way? Great idea. No, it's not. Uh, I'll show you a different example. <coughs> I was outsmarted. What did I put in here? Oh. I'm going to multiply to make 2. 1 and 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Boom. Okay, you outsmarted me. Let me get a different example then. two numbers that multiply to make negative 30 and add to make negative 7. Yes. Two numbers that multiply to make negative 30 and add to make negative 7. Two numbers that multiply to make negative 30 and add to make negative 7. It's negative 10 and 3. Okay. Okay, it's going to take practice. It's on the YouTube video, too. We'll go over it and I'll explain it. Multiply to make negative 30, add to make negative 7. Now, these, we're going to split apart negative 7 R into negative 10 R and 3 R. Look at this as a group and factor out what they had in common. Look at this as a group and factor out anything they 
they have in common, and we'll get the same factor twice. And then we factor that out, we get 3r minus 5 times 2r plus 1.